Hello, my name is Tiana Jovanovic Talisman, and I'm an associate professor in the Department of Cancer Biology and Molecular Medicine at the Beckman Research Institute of the City of Hope. This comprehensive cancer center is located in California, USA. Today, I will tell you about single molecule localization microscopy and how this microscopy approach can be used to characterize extracellular vesicles. I will call them EVs for short. As you know, many different modalities are available for imaging in biomedicine. Single molecule localization microscopy, or SMLM for short, is a fluorescence-based super-resolution microscopy method that can visualize biological systems with an optical resolution measured in the tens of nanometers. It is an excellent imaging approach as it can cover a wide range of spatial scales that match well with the size ranges of different classes of extracellular vesicles and particles. If you would like to learn more about the details of this method, we have included a current and comprehensive review. SMLM comprises several techniques. Some of the most well-known techniques include palm or photoactivated localization microscopy, storm or stochastic optical reconstruction microscopy, and paint or point accumulation for imaging in nanoscale topography. Because SMLM has single molecule sensitivity and nanoscale precision, it provides information about important characteristics of particles. For example, SMLM can determine the number of detected particles, either on a surface or in cell or ex vivo environment. Additionally, SMLM can define both the diameter of individual particles and their detected molecular cargo content. Importantly, SMLM can identify individual EVs using fluorescent reporters. Like many other imaging methods, SMLM is a minimally invasive, optically-based approach that can be used to observe biological samples. While conventional microscopy methods are limited to a lateral resolution of about 200 nanometers, SMLM has a markedly improved resolution of about 5 to 20 nanometers. So how does SMLM achieve such high resolution? When light passes through a lens, it produces a collection of photons. A pixelated diffraction limited image is shown here. These photons have a Gaussian distribution. The majority of photons are found in the center of the spot shown in red. We can mathematically fit this distribution of these photons and we can determine the most probable position of the fluoropore. For this elegant principle to work, we need a good signal-to-noise ratio. We can achieve signal-to-noise ratio that is excellent by choosing an appropriate illumination method. For example, total internal reflection illumination allows us to activate only a subset of fluoropores in one plane. We can tune the illumination angle to excite and image only molecules with, within, within about 150 nanometers of the cover slope. The critical element of SMLM is the ability to temporarily regulate the activation of fluoropores. If peaks overlap, we cannot properly fit Gaussians and find the most probable position of these fluoropores. To ensure that we can apply Gaussian fitting, we need to image isolated fluoropores. That means we need to image one or fewer fluoropores in the diffraction limited spot in each frame. We can accomplish this by temporarily regulating the stochastic activation of single fluoropores. Only a subset of fluoropores that do not overlap is imaged in each frame. Their positions are then fit and frames are combined to reconstruct the image that contains all detected localizations. By repeating this process many times, we accumulate localization to reconstruct a final super-resolved image. To illustrate how SMLM works, we included an image of an EV that was labeled using fluorescent organic dye called Alexa Fluor 647. 
These Alexa Fluor 647 molecules absorb 640 nanometer laser light, and then they emit photons that are collected by the camera. A diffraction limited image is represented here by a white pixelated spot. The most probable localization of this fluorophore, which we obtained by Gaussian fitting, is represented with a red cross. This activated Alexa Fluor 647 molecules can turn on and off or blink several times until they are photo bleach and can no longer emit photons. A new subset of molecule is activated and they also turn on and off until they are photo bleached. This process is repeated until all molecules are captured and the V is fully imaged. Of note, efficient SMLM imaging of many organic dyes requires imaging buffers that contain reducing agents and well-controlled oxygen content. These molecular fireworks that you just saw produce localization maps. We need to apply quantitative algorithms to identify and characterize EVs. We have provided a recent review on quantification and clustering methods for SMLM. To efficiently quantify SMLM data, in my lab, we use a MATLAB graphical user interface with built-in analysis algorithms. Many other software options are available. We can define EV size and molecular content using different clustering algorithms. For example, in the Voronoi tessellation method on the bottom, the image is segmented into polygonal regions or cells represented with blue lines according to distances between the localizations. Effectively, each cell is centered around one localization. Regions with high molecular densities, such as EVs that are outlined in red here, can be identified based on cells that have small areas. SMLM allows us to determine the sizes of all individual EVs that are detected in the field of view. To accomplish this, we can measure the fluorescence signal of reporters that densely and specifically label the EV membrane. These experiments required an optimized pre-analytical protocol, analytical protocol, imaging method, and data analysis routine. In some scenarios, these may need to be validated. Additionally, the instrument should also be calibrated. For example, laser powers and localization of individual probes are typically calibrated. In a typical protocol, we first isolate EVs from cell media or biofluid. There are many well-described methods to isolate EVs. SMLM requires the isolated EVs to be intact and unaggregated. Next, these EVs are characterized according to the minimal information for studies of extracellular vesicle guidelines. Finally, EVs are fluorescently labeled, fixed, and imaged. The labeling step is not needed at this stage if EVs have been genetically labeled with a fluorescent protein. Importantly, SMLM can assess both isolated EVs and EVs in cellular environments. For SMLM imaging, EVs need to be fluorescently labeled. We have included two recent comprehensive reviews on how to fluorescently label EVs. The reviews describe important controls as well as the advantages and disadvantages of each methodology. Here I will briefly discuss four typical approaches. EVs can be covalently labeled with photocontroller or fluoropores. For example, organic dyes such as Alexa Fluor 647, CF568, and ATO488 are often used as they turn on and off well. These fluorescent dyes contain reactive groups such as an NHS ester or malamide. The dyes can thus label appropriate and accessible residues on EV membranes. This approach provides excellent labeling density to visualize EVs. Another labeling strategy is to use genetic labeling with optical highlighter proteins. These proteins, such as photoactivatable GFP or MEOS, can be photoactivated or photoswitched to enable stochastic activation. 
Another important example is affinity labeling. Affinity reagents can include antibodies, antibody fragments, specific proteins, lectins, molecular beacons, and aptamers. They can be conjugated with either photocontrollable fluorescent dyes or quantum dots. It is essential that these reagents specifically label the target of interest and have high binding capacity. EVs can also uptake lipophilic molecules or lipid analogs tagged with photocontrollable fluorescent dyes. So how do we interpret SMLM data? In this example, we fluorescently labeled EVs with lectin conjugated with Alexa Fluor 647. Then EVs were isolated onto cover slips, fixed, and imaged. Localization maps obtained with SMLM are shown in red. Analyzing these localization with Voronoi tessellation algorithms allowed us to detect EVs and measure their size. For EVs isolated from pancreatic cancer cell line PANK1, a histogram of sizes with the average diameter and coefficient of variation, or CV, that informs on sample heterogeneity is shown. We validate the size values from this approach using transmission electron microscopy, or TM. The average diameter and coefficient of variation are well matched. Other quantitative algorithms can be used to assess these localization maps. When using a new approach for analysis, validation with simulation or complementary techniques is recommended. For SMLM, the lower size detection limit is largely constrained by the number of detected photons. The larger the number of photons, the better the localization precision. The size of the fluorescent probe is also relevant. For example, antibodies are quite large, about 12 nanometers in size. For typical conditions, the lower EV size threshold is about 15 to 30 nanometers. However, this threshold can be reduced by optimizing the probes and imaging protocols. The upper size detection limit can be constrained by the illumination protocol. But with optimal illumination and 3D detection, most EV sizes can be detected, including those above 500 nanometers. The real advantage of SMLM is that it can also provide molecular cargo content by measuring fluorescent signal of reporters. Importantly, fluorescent reporters that detect molecules of interest need to be specific and have high binding capacity. Remember, we detect a fluorescent reporter. If the affinity reagent does not bind to the target, we will not detect the target. If affinity reagent binds not specifically, we will detect artifacts. If genetically labeled constructs are used, they need to have appropriate biological localizations and unperturbed function. For luminal cargo, permeabilization conditions should also be evaluated. As mentioned, in SMLM fluorescent reporters turn on and off or blink, we need to evaluate the average number of localizations of these fluorescent reporters to accurately determine the detected number, number of cargo molecules. One way to define the photophysical properties of fluorescent reporters, such as the fluorescently labeled antibody illustrated here, is to image them isolated on the surface. For this calibration, we need to use the same imaging conditions and parameters that we use to image EVs. For example, this fluorescent reporter appears three times before being photobleached. We will assess many spots, determine average number of localizations per fluorescent reporter, and use this value to calculate detected molecular density. Next, we need to identify EVs and determine their molecular content. If we image abundant membrane proteins, such as the traspanins, we can easily identify EVs shown here in red. If we want to assess cargo that is not abundant, we can use two-color imaging. EV membranes can be labeled in one color, and the desired cargo can be labeled in another color. 
EVs are identified based on the membrane staining yellow in this example. Then we can assess molecular cargo content and the number of EVs that contain a cargo of interest. Since SMLM method has high sensitivity, the lower detection limit is a single molecule, while the upper detection limit is constrained by probe size and labeling strategy. SMLM provides a readout on two key features, EV size and detected molecular content. The combined information can be used to define EV heterogeneity. For example, the image EGFR enriched vesicles that were detected using a fluorescently labeled antibody against EGFR. Many EVs were detected from a cultured pancreatic cancer cell line called PANC1 which has high EGFR expression. Each dot in the scatter plot shown in the bottom panel represents the detected vesicle. It reports the number of detected EGFR molecules on y-axis and EV size on x-axis. Significantly fewer EVs were detected from cultured non-cancerous epithelial pancreatic cells that have lower EGFR expression. Importantly, the number of detected EGFR molecules in these vesicles was also significantly lower. While SMLM can comprehensively characterize individual EVs, it is a relatively low throughput technique. Sample preparation can take anywhere from two hours to a day. Imaging and data analysis can take up to 30 minutes each. The technology is not yet scalable to industrial application. However, with advances in instrumentation and automation, SMLM has promising and exciting potential in biotechnology and diagnostics. SMLM can not only detect and characterize individual EVs, but also track individual EVs. Of note, tracking requires slightly modified imaging and buffer conditions. Several assay controls are recommended to validate results. Appropriate reagent control should be included. For example, the affinity reagents we use to label EVs should be specific. The reagent should have a high binding capacity and be used with optimized protocols. If EVs are being affinity isolated onto surfaces, we should assess affinity controls or non-fouling surfaces. Detergent lysis controls are recommended. This is especially important when new protocols are developed as it allows EVs to be distinguished from any potential protein aggregates. Finally, newly developed image analysis methods should be properly evaluated. When describing SMLM experiments, we should report details on EV sample preparation, imaging, and data analysis. For sample preparation, Data reporting should include the EV purification method with bulk EV characterization to show that isolated EVs have a good morphology and appropriate markers. The reporting should include details regarding the protocol for labeling EVs. If applicable, reporting should include cover slip functionalization and EV isolation protocols. For sample imaging, reporting should include the microscope configuration, imaging conditions, and imaging parameters. For multicolor imaging, the alignment between channels and any applied corrections for chromatic aberration should be included. For data analysis, reporting should include the image processing parameters and photophysical characterization of relevant fluorescent reporters. Additionally, details on data analysis parameters and algorithms should be included. When imaging EVs with SMLM, we should use appropriate imaging buffer, find optimal conditions for sample preparation, imaging, and analysis, always include controls, and make sure to image multiple areas with appropriate sampling to account for heterogeneity. When imaging EVs with SMLM, we should not image areas with surface defects, and we should not treat all samples or experiments equally. Imaging conditions, parameters, and controls are distinct from experiment to experiment. 
Here are some examples of SMLM imaging of EVs. EV membranes can be covalently labeled with photoswitchable dyes, affinity labeled with lectins conjugated to photoswitchable dyes, or labeled by uptake of membrane stain molecules such as cell mask orange obtained SML images of EVs are shown here. EV cargo such as membrane proteins, luminal proteins, lipids, and nucleic acids can also be visualized and quantified. For example, here, cargo molecules were affinity labeled and detected with SMLM. Multicolor imaging can be used to assess the fraction of EVs that contain the cargo of interest. In that case, EV membrane can be labeled in one color, and EV cargo can be labeled in different instrument-compatible color. Importantly, SMLM is a quantitative method. There are some excellent reports of EV characterization in the literature. For example, SMLM was used to define EV size, quantify the detected molecular content of proteins, determine number of localization of microRNA, and number of localization of DNA fragments in EVs. SMLM can also be used to identify subpopulation of EVs that express specific proteins. The example shown here depicts EGFR-enriched EVs from healthy subjects in blue and patients that have pancreatic cancer in red. We assess six, six healthy subjects and five cancer patients. We plotted both the size and EGFR content for all detected vesicles. EVs from cancer patients had complex distributions. We assessed a cancer-associated population outlined in the polygon by negative gating. SMLM can also molecularly dissect EV components. For example, we showed the distribution of CD9 in yellow, CD63 in red, and CD81 in green. Some vesicles have only one tetraspanin, some have two distinct tetraspanins, while some have all three tetraspanins. The literature also has some excellent examples of imaging EVs in cellular environments. They include the uptake of EVs by cells and the secretion of either EVs or EV clusters by cells. In future, I hope we will see advances in sample preparation and labeling. The development of multiplex assays with increased throughput and automation will help identify multiple EV subpopulations. Advances in 3D EV tracking can clarify EV biology. Finally, faster EV identification and quantification with new methodologies will help streamline the approach. Here you will find the references I mentioned during the lecture. I would like to acknowledge my former and current lab members, collaborators, and funding sources. Thank you so much for your attention.